There are different ways of uh, using a theory to inform or drive a study or a research process. And in my presentation this afternoon, I'm going to talk about uh, how a researcher or a student can use a theory to drive uh, a research process by using the theory to inform the research questions, the hypothesis, the research objectives, the questionnaire, the interview guide, data analysis, uh, data uh, reporting. Imagine uh, Bran and myself were to go to uh, Rodsberg. Rodsberg is one of the uh, townships in Durban and it's quite intricate for a person to, uh, to get there because of the road network. And Bran has the automotive navigation system in his, in his car. And I don't have. And neither do I have the Google map. And neither have I consulted people uh, like Sue have been to Rodsberg before. And we are required uh, to go to Rodsberg. From your thinking, who is likely to find it easy to get to Rodsberg? Who is likely to find it easy to get to Rodsberg? Come again. Brian. Brian. Uh, why? Because he, okay, he has a system. So he has a system that is going to guide him, get to the intended destination. He has a reliable system to guide him. Not only reliable, trustworthy, scientific device. It will guide him to give him directions on how to get to Rodsberg. In the same manner, a theory is a body of scientific knowledge, like the automotive navigation system. In a research process, a theory is a research navigation system. It is a reliable body that is able to guide the researcher to get or generate an answer to a research problem, phenomenon, behavior, or relationship under study. A theory is a body of knowledge or scientific knowledge that is dependable in explaining a research problem or phenomenon under study. A theory is a body of knowledge that has been tested and found trustworthy in making a researcher understand the nature of the research problem. It is a research navigation system in a research process. Therefore, I believe it is very important for a researcher to have a research navigation system if he or she is to get to the intended destination, if he or she is to find, to get the answer to the research question being investigated or explored, explored in a research project. A theory is a tentative or rather provisional explanation why things happen the way they do. A theory explains why things happen the way they do. Imagine you were to go to one of the institutions of higher learning in Durban, or maybe a private uh, institutions or organizations, and you have a chance to interact with employees in that, in, in that institution. And you come to observe that they are highly motivated. They are dedicated and committed professionals. 
performance is 100%. You would want to understand why this behavior exists. And a theory can help you understand why workers or employees are motivated or demotivated. There are theories that explain demotivation and demotivation of workers. For example, Manslow's theory of hierarchy of needs, the equity theory, the reinforcement theory, and the other theories that try to explain why things happen the way they do. A theory predicts a tentative and general answer to a research problem or phenomenon under study. Now, listen carefully. It predicts a tentative, not a permanent, not a final answer, a tentative answer. And it provides a general answer, not specific answer. Because the specific answer will only be generated after the study has been completed. A theory is a model of reality. It's not the actual reality. It's a, rep a replica, a copy, a representation, a symbolism of the answer to a research phenomenon. Therefore, when you have a theory, you haven't yet, you haven't finalized, you haven't concluded your study. It gives you a general answer to the research problem you are investigating. A theory, and this is very important to understand, a theory is made up of interrelated constructs, or rather ideas. Now, these constructs are connected and interconnected, meaning there is a mutual relationship between the constructs. The constructs in the theory depend on one another to be meaningful. On their own, they do not make a theory. They depend on each other to make a united whole, and this united whole is a theory. So in short, a theory is made up of constructs. A theory is made up of constructs that are coherent, meaning the constructs in the theory are logical, consistent, and form the united whole, a theory. You know, scholars argue that uh, human beings are both physical and rational. And because we are both physical and rational, we have physical needs. Uh, for example, shelter, water, clothes, food, or even sex. Unless uh, you are in the monastery where you are practicing celibacy and chastity, you are forgoing sex for the sake of the kingdom of God. Oh, okay. Otherwise, we have physical needs. But apart from having physical needs, we have rational needs because we are rational beings. And because we are rational beings, we cogitate and excogitate. We think in and think out. And most of the times when we think out, we raise questions about phenomenon. We raise questions about what we have observed. So when we observe, sometimes we fail to understand or to have an answer to a phenomenon we have observed or a behavior we have witnessed. And because we need an answer, we will continue to pine for an answer. And that is the reason a master's or a PhD student, a candidate will develop a research topic in order to understand a phenomenon or a behavior he or she has observed. She, ha she or he has scientific needs. She wants an explanation to a phenomenon we question, and it's not always that we get the answers so easily, even from the existing expanse of knowledge. And that is where the, a theory comes in, trying to meet our 
our rational needs, our questions, trying to answer the questions that we have generated from what we have observed. A theory is a body of scientific knowledge trying to answer our questions. Now, what is the purpose of a theory in a research project? A theory in a research project is very important because it provides a basis, a foundation, a starting point for conducting research. It helps a researcher to see the problem clearly by providing or proposing the constructs, the variables, the ideas and issues to be studied. Therefore, a theory proposes issues that must be interrogated, that must be studied in a research project. A theory provides profound insight into a research problem or phenomenon being studied. It provides deeper understanding of the nature of the research problem or phenomenon. Now, I've talked about what a theory is, trying to define what a theory is. How would you explain or define a theoretical framework? What is a theoretical framework? If you were to deduce from what I talked about concerning uh, what a theory is, what is a theoretical framework? What is a theoretical framework? Yes, what is a theoretical framework? I know you have used this term theoretical framework or even framework at least. In what context were you talking about a framework? What is a framework? Okay. Yes, a, a framework. I often I see a framework in because often a theory is in words. Okay. And to me, a framework um, is when, which is always very useful because I'm visual, is when that can be depicted in sort of a diagrammatic way. Okay. So it's still it's still a theory, but it's been placed in a way where you can see the inter actions or the relationships or the links, it often has arrows and, and you know, so it, it presents it in some kind of a visual diagrammatic way. Oh, sure. So it's the, it's the diama, diama, diagrammatic representation of a theory. And that is true. A theory is a structure of constructs or ideas in a theory. It is a skeleton, the scaffold of constructs that hold or support a theory. A theoretical framework provides a specific starting point or basis or foundation for conducting a study. It clearly outlines, it sketches out the constructs, the variables, the issues to be studied. So it's Unlike a theory, which is more like a, a general body of knowledge, scientific knowledge, a, theo a, a theoretical framework is more specific in outlining, in sketching out the constructs in that particular uh, theory. Now, how do we identify an appropriate theory for a study or in a research process? There are different ways that can be used or methods that can be used to identify a, a good theory for a study, or a suitable theory for a study. One of the ways is to go back to your research topic and identify the research problem. And that is why it is very important when you are working on your research proposal 
that you develop a good research topic. And one of the good, one of the characteristics of a good research topic is a research topic that is able to state the research problem. Actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer that each topic must state the research problem. Your topic may not state the place, the population, but at least it must state the research problem. And that is where you go back to in trying to identify an appropriate theory for your study. Now, when you look at this topic, postgraduate students' perceptions of sexual risk behavior at the University of KwaZulu Natal. Can someone tell me what is the research problem uh, in that uh, topic? What is the research problem? What is the research problem? What is the researcher going to study or the researcher is studying? Yes. Um, the research of the study is sexual risk behavior. We'll be, we'll be studying sexual risk behavior. OK. I agree with you. The researcher will be studying perceptions of sexual risk behavior. So what you do, you go back to your research topic, identify the research problem. After you have identified the research problem, you need to identify the core, the kernel, the heart of the research problem. And the heart of the research problem in this topic is risk behavior. And then you use the core of the research problem as your search strategy for, an, for the appropriate theory. We, you use the core of the research problem as your search words. Therefore, you go to the existing expanse of knowledge. Look for a theory on risk behavior. And I want you to see what this researcher did when he identified the core of the research problem and the kind of theory that he identified. After using risk behavior as the search strategy, the researcher identified risk behavior as a theory to underpin his study. And according to Jason, he argues, to, to, he argues that Risk behavior, especially among young people, is influenced by behavioral, social, individual, and biological factors. That is Jesus' theory of risk behavior. In other words, Jesus is saying risk behavior among young people is influenced by four factors. Biological, social, individual, and behavioral factors. When you look at this risk behavior theory, it gives a tentative and provisional explanation, or it gives a tentative answer to the research problem to be investigated. It's not giving a final answer. The final answer will be realized after the research project has been concluded. Now, this is what we are talking about when I asked you what is a theoretical a framework. So Jess argues that there are four factors, four main factors that influence risk behavior. So it is important in your research proposal, even in your dissertation or thesis, to present, explain the theory. After you have explained the theory, you present your theoretical framework, the scaffold of the main ideas in the theory. This is very important because you want to show the examiners or the reviewers, even your supervisor, that you understand the theory that is underpinning your